Tuesday. It's your girl, Anja. And today I have somebody that I look up to so much. She's truly incredible. She's out here killing it. And she's so many things. Like we could talk about her choreographer. She's a dance teacher. She travels all over. She's really living out her dreams. She's an amazing performer. And I just want to grow up to like be her for real, for real. All right, you guys, please help me welcome my girl, Shanna. Yay. <laughs> how are you I'm I'm okay thank you how are you doing I'm so good I know you're super busy so I'm not even gonna keep you that long but we just gotta get into all the things that you love and are passionate about okay sounds good sounds good okay so you are a true triple threat right you're a dancer singer actor I mean you do it all right I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So where does your love start? So let's go all the way back to the beginning of time. Like when did you fall in love with performing in general? Oh gosh, it really is the dawn of time. So um, <laughs> I, my mom put me in dance class when I was three. So that was 40 years ago. Um, she put me into dance, ballet, like you do. And then I said, when I was four, I said, mommy, I want to take tap. And then the next year I said, mommy, I want to take jazz. Um, and it just kept growing from there. I grew up, uh, in a suburb of DC in a Maryland suburb and this amazing dance teacher. It was a very small studio. Um, and it just kept growing. I'm a Virgo. So I am a perfectionist and dance was the one thing that didn't come easy that I didn't want to stop doing. Like my parents, I was very fortunate. I um, grew up middle class and I was very lucky that I had a lot of opportunities presented to me. Um, my parents had me try golf and I was like, no, tennis. Absolutely not. I did do swim team, but my dance teacher was like, you're short. You're never going to be a giant. Let's get real. So make a choice. <laughs> um, so dance was the one thing that um, I wanted to keep, keep doing. And then um, I would watch, you know, AMC Turner classic movies when I was a little kid. And I remember watching when I was like nine or something singing in the rain. And that movie, I was like, oh, I want to do that. Like, I want to be. What I love. Oh my god, I wanted to be Sajiri so desperately because she's just all legs and all glamour. Um, and yeah, it just kept going from there. <laughs> so, what about your musical theater life? Because you're more than just a dancer. Like you hit the theater side pretty hard too. At what age did you think drama was was it for you as well? Well, it actually. My, my dance teacher, so I grew up, it was a competitive dance studio, but not like you see today. We were, we were not focused on getting the tricks. We were very focused on the technique and the performance. So she, when we joined the, the company, um, she brought in a local drama teacher and we had to take acting on Saturday mornings as a company with this person. And it was when I was a kid, I was like, this is so weird. It's so awkward. And then she told me, if you want to do this, you have to sing. So I took voice lessons from my piano teacher who was, you know, the community theater director and just like this all around great woman. Um, and I hated singing. I hated it. And it just, it made me so vulnerable versus yes. dancing was just, I, I could express, but I didn't have to make noise doing it unless it yeah. was with my feet tap dancing. Um, and so I actually, I never really loved, loved it until mm -hmm. I realized that I had to do it. Like I had to take on those other trainings, but I went to college as a dance major. I went to Point Park, got my BA mm -hmm. in dance, but I knew 
um, that I needed to take voice. So I took voice when I was in school. Um, and so I, yes, I would be a technical triple threat, but I am absolutely a dancer who can sing and oh, act. Oh, really? That's what you than, identify as? Yes, that's how I identify. <laughs> rather okay. than saying I am a dancer and a singer and an actress, I am a dancer who can sing and act. Um, so, you know, I do I like to sing now? Not really, but I do. <laughs> no way. No, it still makes me super sweaty. Um, and I do it because I have to. And, you know, it's something that it doesn't, it doesn't come easy and naturally to me the way dancing does, the way choreography does and the way teaching does. So I would have never, like, I've known you for years now and I just truly would have never picked up on that at all. So that's interesting. (laughs) Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I say, I tease when I'm teaching class and I joke because when I would teach, teach the shows and I would have to sing all the parts I'd say well I'm singing in the key of Shani so <laughs> I don't know what it, <laughs> it sounds okay it's not flat it's not pitchy it's just my own key <laughs> okay so when you're out like getting jobs and stuff like did you get a lot of feedback with your singing like negative feedback or was it like just good enough to like get you through oh no it was um it was definitely traumatizing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I started in this business back in the late, late 90s and early 2000s, it was a different atmosphere. It was not, you know, it was not a supportive and encouraging environment. So um, I had my, I had a wonderful voice teacher in college. She was very supportive, but we had to do our vocal juries where we get graded. We had to perform them in front of the entire voice faculty and the other students in that session so it was it was intense I was like it was it was intense and then when I would audition early on and I was auditioning I had an experience where I was at the audition for two whole days and it you know we were it was for a summer stock and it was like all the entire all the creative teams came back then and so it was a panel of like 15 people sitting And they all, all the shows were great for me. It was crazy for you. It was West Side Story. It was all of these shows that I don't remember the other two, but they were shows that I could easily slide into, which was also hard for me, which we can get into later. But the way that I look, I was never, especially back then, I um, was always pigeonholed into not quite enough of anything. So I wasn't often considered versus these shows and these teams were like she's fabulous let's put her on stage and then I went in to sing my song and the whole panel like dominoes from right to left just was like <clears throat> the last domino that fell was they scratched off my name and I was like okay. mortified oh, mortified I was it's like cool I love singing yay <laughs> So it's been kind of, it's been a, it's been a journey ever since then. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. I actually love that feedback because I have like a private voice coach and I just, it was just not a good time. And I just like, I studied, I went, I spent a fortune and I was just like, maybe the singing part for me is just not where I need to be. Like, yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, if, if you want to pursue theater, um, not you specifically, but like the general you, if you want to pursue theater, you do need to find a way as a dancer through that, through that speed bump of singing. Um, You know, it's just something, it's something that we have to do. I was teaching a workshop on Wednesday and the, and it was all, you know, junior high, high school kids. I was asking them, what do we do in musical theater? That's in musical theory. And that's different than any other genre. And not a single one of them, thought to say sing and when I said I sing and dance at the same time their brains just like burst out of their (laughs) slow like what you know and it's um so it's something and I acknowledge it too for myself like it is absolutely a a speed bump for me and always has been and probably always will be so but you have to be able to find a way and I say that to you um, to say, 
maybe that teacher, that coach wasn't the person to help you work through that, but there is somebody out there that will help you work through that, you know? Actually, that's a really good life, Jim, that like <laughs> you have to find your person that you fit with. And, you know, she was really strict too. And I was stressed out and I was like, I want to dance anyways. Like, why am I singing these songs? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta find somebody that you jive with. It's like finding it. And honestly, a voice teacher is oftentimes like a therapist mm. because your voice is so affected by what you are going through in a day right so if you walk into that space and you're carrying can I say bad words <laughs> yes absolutely okay. I want you to be your most authentic okay. self so oh, I say a lot of bad words if you're carrying okay. a shit ton of baggage from that day that's going to physically weigh on your voice right and so if you cannot find somebody that you feel comfortable just even surface level just being like you know what shit sucks today and being able to just kind of navigate that for the mm -hmm. first 10 minutes and your lessons you're you're going it's just like when you're dancing right like if you yeah. come into the studio carrying all of that weight of your day and unable to and I'm not saying I'm all, and I tell my students this too I'm trying to undo that mindset of leave your shit at the door because that's not healthy but you have to find a way to dance with the shit dance through it or alongside it right and it's because it does it affects you it affects that's, you hold on that's so interesting because you know obviously I'm from that generation where like leave it at the door like nobody cares like nobody's gonna buy a ticket to see like nobody cares so like that is interesting that you are allowing space for this new generation to be like okay you're going through it dance through it because like I don't think I don't think I got any of that type of uh conversation growing up right yeah no I definitely didn't and you know, it's, I think it's finding the balance though too, right? Like, I think that the, the younger generation is, um, they wear it all so openly. So openly. And I'm like, sometimes that is, you know, not serving you, but how can you find that balance of leave it out here, come with it, but know that you still have to get, you still have to get stuff done. You still have to get life done, right? Yeah. Um, so that's the same thing as with a voice teacher. You have to be able to feel comfortable with that person and they, and feel supported by that person. You know, you don't want to spend $150 to be like, talk all through it. I mean, you could, that's what an actual therapist is for, but you know, like finding that, finding that balance. Yes. I love that. So I want to get into, you did amazing show for like, what, 10 years? Do you want to talk about that show? And I think you found the love of your life and you found a lot of great things during that period. You want to tell us what show that was? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I did a little show called Wicked for um, almost, well, now I guess it was almost, um, it was almost eight years that okay. I did it on and off. Um, yeah. And so I started in the Broadway company. Um, as a vacation emergency swing so I learned my first track in four days and then they would say oh can you come in and it was this was in the first two years of the show running I am very old um <laughs> it was very early on before they had they had just sent out the first national tour so before they had the gazillions of companies all around um so they would call me and say, oh, can you come in a half hour before half hour and learn so-and-so's act one? Or can you learn this and that? And as if I'm going to ever say no. Right. Yes, is the answer. I know, right? So I'm like, yeah, I will. I can be there. Um, So that's how I learned the show. And then there was a woman who got uh, really seriously injured. And so I was filling in for her in her track for um, nine months on Broadway. And then I helped out with the first national tour. I helped out with the Chicago company and then radio silence for a year. No radio. way. Yeah. Did and you then, feel a little uh, used and abused at that point? Since oh, they were I felt like, a lot used and okay. abused. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because, because I, um, you know, I love the show and I loved doing this show and they, like, I, I was in the middle of the show. Shoshana Bean was singing Wizard and I, and they came to me and said, will you go to Denver in the morning? And I said, do I have a choice? And they said, not really. We need you to go. So I fly to Denver 
the, the next morning, learn a whole new track and a whole new company in four hours. And then I perform it all weekend. And then I fly back home and swoop into my regular track. And when I, you know, so yes, I felt absolutely used and abused. Um, and then out of the blue, they called me and said, um, will you, are you interested in dance captaining the first national tour? And I said, uh, are you calling the right person? Do you remember who I am actually? You, you know my number? Yeah. Like, oh, you, you know, you know this number? Um, and they said, oh yeah, yeah. Um, you'll have to leave in like three weeks, but we're also reaching out to a couple other people. And I was like, cool. I have like six jobs, literally six jobs that I need to tie up. Okay. If you're going to send me. So what are we doing? So they sent me and I was out on the first national as their dance captain for almost five years. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So you have done so many things, so many highs and lows. This industry can be very, very brutal. So who are you calling for support? Who has your back when even today you are still a boss chick? So who who do you talk to when things are just like not making sense? Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I talk to my husband. I'm very grateful that, uh, my husband um, has experienced this business. The wall that you see behind me are all his shows. Um, <laughs> love, 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 love. Um, he's so I talked to him. Um, and then throughout the twenty three years I've been doing this, um, I've acquired some really awesome people that are now family. And um, there's also Christopher Gatelli is my mentor. He swooped me up right when I moved to New York City. And, um, just has been so good to me professionally, but more than that, he's been like a big brother to me. So when, with that time, when I had radio silence from Wicked, you know, and I was assisting him on tons of things, but I was so, um, beaten down. He's like, this is your meantime. This is the in-between. It's going to be okay. Um, so I talked to him and, you know, I just... I find my people and um, people that think similarly to me. And now that I'm older and I'm more of a, an educator kind of person, um, I find people that, that think and try to put forth the same kind of energy that I do in the studio. And um, yeah, I just, I have a, I have a, I have a core. You have a core. Yeah. Okay, so did your college prepare you for the real world or when you were thrown to the real world where you were like shocked at what life had for you? Or did you have a pretty good understanding of what career you chose? Uh, you know, that's a really good question because also it was a really long time ago. Um, <laughs> I, the, the education and training that I received at Point Park made me... Um, a very smart dancer and also taught and, and, and is the foundation for the educator that I am today. Did they give me the business how to's? No. Um, you know, they, they, again, it was a different time. So the, <laughs> the, um, intense kind of, uh, not I don't know the right word I don't want to say trauma but I it wasn't mentally super healthy yeah um, of course but that gave me the resilience to go to New York and to not give up because I had had these examples in school where you know it's like you're not the best you're you know I mean my teacher in college who was the weirdest person, but so brilliant. He told me that I had feet like blueberry muffins and I have, I'm known for like my cashew feet and he's, it freaked me out. But then I realized in hindsight, I was like, oh, you're telling me not to rely on my feet to get me anywhere, right? Like you're telling me to think about my whole body as a dancer. But his way of saying that was to scream at me. Oh, and tell me it was so off. Muffins. Yeah, I was like, what? I don't know what that means. Um, and he was, he would ignore us for like three weeks and then two weeks, he'd be like on your tail to just get, get you stronger. 
and that roller coaster, but that roller coaster is exactly what life is in this business, you know? So it gave me the resilience. Do I think that it was a healthy way of teaching me resilience? No. Do I, <laughs> do I teach that way? No, but I am resilient. Um, but I didn't know anything about like getting it. I also didn't need an agent 20 years ago to do what I wanted to do. But I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know. I had to learn it. And I learned it from the people above me. So once I graduated, there were still people that were like the upper class of life. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So the various people that I was working with or auditioning with or talking, like auditions, that was the time. I have a friend. I'm about to work with her literally on Monday. She's choreographing the show. And we have never been paid to work together. And we have been friends for over 20 years because we met in the audition studio that is the best advice meeting people at auditions I have some of the greatest business connections and friends that I love on and support and like you said I've never booked a gig with them before but they are truly blessings I think people should take yeah. that away for auditions it's not I know you're there to get that job but if you like open yourself up to like communicating with them people next to you that's gold. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of my, you know, life mottos is don't be a dick. <laughs> Facts, right? Facts. Yeah, like, you never know. And you never know how that, and, and Kristen is, as you were asking, like, who do I talk to? Kristen is one of those people that's in my core that I'm like, girl, my life is banana pants. What do I do? And we talk what through it together. Doing? Yeah. But not only do you find that, but like you could be in the space, you could be in the same space with somebody who's an associate on another show and they could be behind the table the next week. And if you were a jerk in the audition, they're going to tell their they're boss. Remember, it's a small world too. Yes. Very small. Yes. Yes. Yeah. percent. So that's who I learned from how to do the thing was, and, and when I did book work, I was that young person who was sitting in the corner watching Learning. the director work with the lead actors. I was nowhere near in that scene, but I was in the corner, you know, just taking it all in. I was in the dressing rooms watching the older women. And by older, I mean like three years older than me who had <laughs> done a gazillion Broadway shows. And I was like, I know how to do my makeup, but I'm like, how oh, did they do their eyeliner? Oh, I'm going to do it like that. You know what I mean? You learn so much, don't you? Oh my gosh. Be a sponge. Don't be a dick, be a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, since you do uh, teach the younger generation, right? And like, like I said, I come from definitely that brutal dance world. Like, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. That was like really toxic kind of environment. How do you think the younger generation that you're teaching is going to be able to handle the grind and the ugly side of our industry because like you said both of us come out of unpleasant experiences that we can get through some pretty hard directors or pretty hard casting situations like do you think the younger generation is gonna have that kind of grit and that grind and that thick skin no or maybe they won't need it <laughs> I mean hoping they don't need it but here's the thing because all of us are going to be replacing the people that are toxic right hopefully however it takes time right it's not as if we all have the gauntlet from you know uh the avengers we don't have that thing where we can snap our fingers and we can poof all the people that are toxic away it's mm -hmm. going to take time and that is something that i don't i love how passionate this generation is and i am i am so um sympathetic to what they have been through because of the pandemic and all of those things are navigating. However, I don't think, I don't think that they have the armor to be able to, um, to, to fight the fight, right? Like I had a very traumatic work experience this past holiday season, incredibly mm -hmm. traumatic. I am in at the end of my performing career so I can be more selective I can be the person that's going to say you know what I'm not going to put up with that bullshit you do not deserve my, my talent I would rather do anything else 
then work for you. And I won't, I won't do it so that I can make a statement. Right. And whether my statement is heard is neither here nor there, but I know in my guts that if I'm going to say we need to make change, then I'm going to be proactive versus they so desperately want to work and they are so desperately want to do the thing that they're not willing to put on that armor and be like, no, but they'll, they'll be very upset and they're not, they're not, they don't have the capacity to like think clearly and be like, you know what, this is not okay. I'm going to walk away from this. Yeah, you make up a good point. I know in the beginning of my career, like whatever you want to sign me for, please. I'm working so hard. Plus, I need the money, and then like, I'm training, like da 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 da. And I definitely feel like over the years and booking this, that, and the other, I definitely feel like, nah, I'm not doing that. Like I, but I also feel like I have that backing of my resume and the backing of my career that I can, I could be a little bit more like, eh, what else yeah. you got? So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah I can, I understand that. Being but like, I, do, I just need work. Yeah. And I mean, and I think there is, there is value in doing things that like my, some of the best experiences I had, I did for a Metro card in New York mm-hmm. city and mm-hmm. it taught me so much. I got to work with incredible artists and humans. Um, and yeah, I had credit card debt because I danced in a very small pickup dance company, but the, the experience and the the connections and the dancing that I got to do. And it wasn't traumatic, right? It wasn't toxic. It was beautiful. Um, so yeah, I think there's a balance. Like it's being, cause that's another thing is that every, the younger ones that don't have like what you just said, I have the resume to say, you know what? No, but the, those that are starting off and starting to build a resume, they immediately want the level that you're at oh yeah yeah we gotta (laughs) you gotta go through you gotta go through it because I think we all have those stories about yeah I did it for a metro card or I did it because uh they were at lunch yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah because you've got to like you've got to build a foundation Mm -hmm. and there listen there are those people that right out of school get the primo contract oh those people (laughs) Right. But they're like, I can't, there's like a 0.0 something percent of those people that are getting yeah. to do it the, uh, compared to how many jobs there are. And then that successful job ends and they are done. And there's like, I don't, what I don't know what to do. That is a very true statement. It's like when the job ends, you definitely have to have a certain kind of grit and a mindset that like life isn't over because that contract in because that can be a little devastating especially if it ends way before the end date yep <laughs> yes yes I was talking to my neighbor last night she came over to hang out and she's a non-actor person mm-hmm. and she but she um is like a an advisor to high school students and and getting them ready for their college processes and we're talking about she has a student right now who is looking into musical theater and I bas- and she's we've been neighbors for like seven years and she knows what I do but not many people understand it and I was like I for 23 years I am my job is to chase the next job my job <laughs> is to keep rolling it rolling it forward versus and she said I cannot imagine like I am in my job and I am okay and I don't have to start over unless I want another job right 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 but we don't get to say I want another job it's I have to get another job because it just which is different very different and and I told her like we get our our contracts and our offers are weekly salaries versus other industries are given yearly annual incomes. And when Justin, my husband, first started going full-time teaching and he got an annual income thing, he was like, I don't, I don't know what this means <laughs> because we don't know what that means. Life. What is life? Yes. I'm feeling, I'm literally before this call, I was on the marketplace because my health insurance runs out, talking about adulting, my health insurance runs out today. So I'm back on the marketplace and they're like, fill in your annual income. 
Where? Like, let me see. Let me look at these contracts. Let me, how do I figure that out? Yes. 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 Like, let me get out the spreadsheet, right? Mm -hmm. Versus uh, any other industry could just punch in the number, mm -hmm. you know? So if you had to do it all again, right? You are going to college and somebody's like, what do you do with all the knowledge you have now? Would you still walk this path or would you choose something completely practical? <sighs> I would probably still walk the path because I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> I I have tried to quit several times. I tried to quit when I was in college. Um, and I, because I knew in that moment, I was like, this is ridiculous. What am I doing? But when I tried to think about what else I could do, and I was very smart when I was in high school my honors teachers were like really you want to be a dancer and I was like yes really you're like yes I do I know I was like challenge accepted I hear that Virgo mm -hmm. um and <laughs> so I could have taken several other paths um and I try to think like what else could I see myself doing forever and then I I kept going I persevered I almost quit when Wicked called the first time, I almost quit when Wicked sent me out on tour. And I almost quit when I first moved here to Chicago. Um, and it, it just keeps pulling me back. But mm -hmm. the one thing I would do different is I would balance out my education. So I would not, I don't think I would have stayed strictly as a dance major. I feel like it would have served me to learn about, you know, either to get a business degree, that would have been really smart. Or, but you know, back then in 1997, when I started college, it wasn't really um, super obvious how easy and um, practical coding would have been and getting into okay. like computers was like, it was a thing and it was blowing up, but for the mainstream human, it was like something that was not mainstream, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So I wish for myself, if I were to rewind and get a do over, I would wish that I would either get a business degree or computers learn along learn with your dance stuff. degree, along with the dance. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're such an inspiration. We didn't, we only scratched the surface of how amazing you are. Like I could go on for like hours with you, of course. Oh my gosh. Um, would you like to give anybody listening, anybody who's on another crazy path like us, or just trying to follow their true dreams and live it out to their best ability, last words of wisdom? Oh my gosh. I um, know. You know, I, um, I never, I, <laughs> I have started listening to a lot of mindset podcasts in the past several years. And um, the things that I take away from that are, are a couple of things. One, never, ever stop learning. Uh, we're never done learning, right? Like, even when I go to choreograph a show, I don't walk into a show that we all might know and think, I got it. I am immediately on the Google finding out the history, finding out that time period, finding out the movement that wasn't codified by, you know, American jazz dance or whatever. Like I'm digging into what the, the society was doing, right? So I constantly am learning in order to choreograph. I'm constantly learning the more information that is becoming accessible about the true history of American dance and where it truly comes from I'm I'm reading so that I am passing on the correct and appropriate information versus the appropriated information um <laughs> so I never ever want to stop learning I still go to class when I can to take care of me um and then the other thing that has really kind of, that I really try to pass on to my students is to understand that removing that idea and need for perfection, there's no such thing as perfect. Yeah. And, and relieving yourself of that, like, I have to be perfect. There's absolutely nothing that is perfect in this world. Like your face isn't even perfectly symmetrical, right? Like, right. 
starfish are not perfectly symmetrical. Maybe they are. I don't freaking know. But you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing because that just doesn't exist. So, yes. and, and art, art should never feel perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and I think that while we're training what we do and we're training to do something that is not fully appreciated by the average human being they you know we work really really hard to make it look like any schmo could do it mm -hmm. um true but they don't they don't appreciate what it is the way they appreciate how hard a football player works right like well, we can get on that topic too that could be a whole other episode uh, listen my husband loves the sports ball and I get so mad he's like why did I get so much money and I get it I appreciate it they're putting their bodies through a lot but so are we yeah um and I'm on marketplace <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out adult stuff right here okay giving my yeah. whole life to it <laughs> yeah so I guess that's what I would say is never stop learning one and release the idea of perfection oh and there is one more don't be boring. <laughs> Don't be boring. Don't be boring. Period. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much for coming on Talk To Me Tuesday. I love and appreciate all that you're doing. Keep living oh. your best life. Um, I'm really like inspired by you and I always have been. Oh and gosh, do you. you want them to follow you like on the website or anything? Are you good on that? Sure. Yeah. Please follow me on Instagram. I mean, it's... <laughs> I do what I can. I'm 43. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. She's amazing. Don't let her, don't let her fool you. She knows social media. Okay. I'm trying. Um, but yeah, follow me on the grams. Shanna V dance. Um, I love connecting with people. I love, you know, I just love something else I really love to do. And I'm trying to create, I know you want to like wrap it up, but I'm trying to create this space where like dance is for everybody. Right. Like it's, it is, it's a human thing that we get to do. And yes, I said it, we work really, really hard to make it look easy, but that doesn't mean that people cannot dance and feel good. And when you're training, it doesn't mean that your training has to be always, you know, I have to get it, I have to do it. It can still give you light and it can still bring you joy and it can still be a sense of, um release when the world is really craptastic <laughs> that is so so true beautifully said I love all of that <laughs> all right guys as always I'm gonna put her information right down there so you can totally follow her so check out that bio and once again guys you've been watching talk to me Tuesday it's your girl Anja and until next Tuesday guys bye thank you so much thank you <laughs>